Yeah, so hi, I'm Simon and I'm from the Adapt IT team. Uh, so I'm the managing director, uh, which sounds grander than it really is. I've got a, a team of four people that work with me and together we make IT um, and gaming accessible for all. 
So Adapt IT um, started from the vision from a gentleman called Martin Sliper back in 2001. Uh, his, his vision was to help people with disabilities access IT and gain the benefits that you get from using IT. We took it on after looking for solutions to help my father-in-law who had Parkinson's at the time be able to access IT. Partnering with the Disability Expo, you know, it's it's really nice to be able to work with people that are like-minded. This industry is about helping people. We're not disabled ourselves, but the people developing the Disability Expo are. They, they get it. They understand the struggles and the frustrations. So not only are we partnering with them, they're part of the community that we're engaging with in order to understand what we need to do as a business to be better and to help them uh, make the most of the assistive technology that they can access. My name is Dave Gilbert and I'm the Managing Director of Praetorian Technologies. Well, uh, my name is Bob Sigu and I am the UK and International Sales Manager for Praetorian Technologies. I started Praetorian with a colleague 22 years ago and originally we were not an assistive technology manufacturer. We originally made industrial track walls. Uh, as soon as we introduced it to the market we were immediately asked for more and more products and uh, so we listened and we learned a lot about assistive technologies because we knew very little in, in, back in those days and introduced products uh, really really very quickly and the more we introduced the more people asked us about can you develop this and uh, we generally said yes. We have a, an envious I should say um, a dis global distributed network, uh, and you know, and it is global in, in the true sense of the word. Uh, our manufacturing is entirely based in this building, uh, so we're quite proud of the fact that we uh, we design everything here and we manufacture everything here. Um, we think it's very important, and it's it's. I think we're almost unique in the assistive technology uh, arena in doing all of that in house. Um, Assistive technology manufacturers tend to be small companies and the investment that's necessary to buy the equipment to do that manufacturing is huge and that's why most people don't do it. Uh, but in fact we decided right from the beginning that we would manufacture everything in-house so that we could keep control of it. And time and time again that's been a huge bonus to us because it, it means that, for example, if a large order comes in for a, a government contract somewhere in the world, then we are able to react. We're not dependent on any subcontractors. We don't have to wait for lead times. We can burn the midnight oil if we need to and, and manufacture everything in-house. Well, I think differentiation comes from both the ability to, and the willingness to sit and listen to what people have got to say about what products ought to be on the market. That's a very, very important thing, I think, for Praetorian, but also the ability to be able to manufacture in-house. I think those two things in concert really are what define Praetorian. I am someone who works in the industry and I see the benefit to our twin users and how it helps them, supports them in, in a lot of activities that, are, uh, uh, that they wouldn't normally be able to access or to carry out on their own. I also wear another hat, which is I'm a parent and my son, who is now 17, um, has cerebral palsy, he is in a wheelchair and he is non-verbal and assistive technology really does give him a huge level of empowerment. He can do a lot of activities that he wouldn't necessarily be able to do and that's down to accessing and be able to access assistive technology. So I'm Christian Cole, uh, one of the directors and uh, mostly involved in production and the gaming side of the business. We've got basically a Nintendo Switch set up with the Flex Controller and um, to incorporate eye gaze into it for the eye gaze users uh, you actually have to put it in through a PC just using a, a small dongle. Um, but this allows um, basically all eye gaze slash joystick um, manoeuvrability on the game so it's fully functional at this point with some extra software. So we've got the, the Flex set up, I've got a joystick plugged into one of the sockets so this 
essentially could work like a co-pilot system. So if you had somebody who, who couldn't move any joysticks, but so they couldn't really control the character, um, but they could do all of the eye gaze side of things, uh, then this would come in really useful. Using the eye gaze system, it's going to launch into the map of the game. It's going to scroll to the map, stay on the map for a few seconds, scroll back out and scroll back to its just like original location so that everything can be done in one look. All those actions, um, as you can see, it's a, a bunch of text, can be just in one look, which is really useful obviously for the eye gaze users. We are really excited to be part of the Disability Expo. We see great potential in that event and we are looking forward to showcasing you know, the number of solutions that we have for in the assistive tech range that we do. And uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to, to meeting the delegates and, and interacting with them. And I'm hoping that everybody comes away we're having a great time, but also feeling a bit more informed as to what assistive technology is and the solutions that we provide. So yeah, we're really amped about being part of Disability X, so we, we're really looking forward to it. Today I am joined by Robert Coles. Uh, hello, welcome. Hi, Marlene, nice to see you. <laughs> um, would you like to start by introducing yourself? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, where do I start? Yeah, let's begin with the name. So my name is Robert Coles. I'm um, occupational therapist by trade and work for the German company and mounting expert Redhead of Engineering. Um, I'm responsible for the field of sales and training for all the European resellers. Uh, and I'm yeah, managing all the key contacts here at Red Hat. I have to provide a lot of trainings and do a lot of customer support and I work closely together with partners such as Adept IT uh, and many players all over the world to support them um, yeah, to gain the most yeah, knowledge when it comes to the topic of mounting. Fab. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, the company was founded about yeah a little bit more than 20 years ago from uh, a German engineer um, that is called uh, Joachim Lengemann, and uh, he started after making first experiences in the field of mounting um, to to uh, he was he was inter he he saw a lot of issues and problems uh, with the with the mounting products that were available at the time that were heavy and bulky and uh, yeah, difficult to install. And uh, he wanted to design something uh, completely new out of a new lighter material. He wanted to design an ecosystem um, that makes it easier to position devices with lighter equipment, for example. Um, well, and that was the beginning when he started to, to uh, uh, as I heard, um, I wasn't working at the company at this time, um, <laughs> to, to buy a CNC machine and produce a couple of items and design a couple of um, yeah, products and show it to customers at conferences like the Assistive Technology Industry Association in Orlando, Florida, and showed, well, okay, these are the ideas, these are the products, would you like to test it out, would you like to, to, to use it? Um, and so a couple of AAC companies all over the world were were like the idea and yeah about 20 years later um, I'm happy to say that we are reselling our product to the United States to Australia to about mm -hmm. more than about 50 countries all over the world and the Red Hat ecosystem became more or less the standard in positioning AAC devices and assistive technology equipment. Fab, yeah, fab. And would you be able to just tell me um, how you got into the business? Yeah, well, um, I was, uh, as I said before, I was working as occupational therapist for about five years here in Germany in the rehabilitation center. And one of my uh, one of my customers that was, um, yeah, yeah, that, that was autistic, um, struggled a lot with. Um, the ability to communicate and the the special uh, the special needs home where he lived uh, just gave me him as a new customer and said well he's super uh, aggressive and is hurting everybody um, you are the only man or the only male uh, team member inside the field and you need to work with him and so during getting in touch with him and and, and knowing him better I realized that he had a communication device
device located somewhere in the backside of his room where nobody could use it and note that it is there. And then uh, that was my, my entry level in, in finding ways for him to communicate by using the device and reducing the level of uh, yeah, aggressive behavior to other persons. And that was my beginning. Then I started working for, the German, for a German AC provider here. Uh, and after a couple of years of, of yeah, yeah, providing and, and reselling a lot of devices and supporting customers with communication disabilities, yeah, into the world of yeah, into the world of assistive technology, and so that opened the way into the world of mounting, the world of gaming, of adapting computer controls and environmental controls, and so yeah, that was pretty much the beginning for the company since about. Five years, uh, our idea is to make things as easy as possible in terms of installing or choosing these kind of mounting solutions. Um, we have designed a process that is called the virtual mounting process. So the idea behind is, for example, that when someone needs uh, a mounting support system, um, we have a standardized analyzing process by using our uh, virtual mounting service worksheet to documentate uh, to documentate everything uh, about the customer, his individual needs. We show there also options about something that is called the 316 degrees concept of mounting. So can you like to explain to people if you want to use uh, a communication device or something like that, you want to have the access always and everywhere. So when you're laying in a bed, when you're sitting in a, on a chair, when you're sitting in front of a desk, um, or while you're mobile outside. And I mean, yeah, everything needs to be holding in the right position where customers can use it. And it doesn't matter if it's for a communication device or for gaming equipment. Um, you can only access it and use it right now if it's positioned perfectly for the person with their individual kind of skills. And the VMS service is just easy to use. So, uh, good morning, gents. And good morning. Good morning. Um, would you like to introduce yourselves quickly and where you sit within uh, the Ceratec business? Uh, my name's Corbin. I'm, I'm the sales manager at Ceratec. I've been here about four and a half years. I've um, started off in the warehouse and then slowly worked my way up to sales manager. So, I'm in charge of all the sales and the Ceratec team. And uh, my name's David. Uh, I've only been with the company for about uh, nine, ten months now. Uh, so I joined to help with the marketing and the social media side, but then sort of quickly fell into the sales side uh, under Corbin's leadership and um, been here ever since. Awesome. Uh, welcome, Corbin and and David. So we've we've been working together as businesses for a couple of years now. Um, you <laughs> provide us with a a lot of capabilities around um, keyboards and key guards and switch mounts and and things like that. Um, could you talk a, a little bit about your business and the history, please? Well, Suratech has been going for about forty one years now in total. Uh, it's gone through a different, a few number of takeovers, but of course now we're in the most recent takeover, which happened about 10 years ago. It was taken on our, by our two lovely directors. And now we've just been focusing on trying to get everything to market, try and find a solution for everything and everyone. We go through uh, OEM, education, medical, EPOS, if you can think it, we can do it type of thing. <laughs> 41 years is a long time. I mean, we've been looking at probably close to 35 years now that sort of IT and, and things like that have been around. So you, you're quite well established within the marketplace. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how you pick technologies and how you look at the sort of marketplaces you're going to, because as a what I would class as a peripheral type business, there's there's so many things that you could be looking at. Uh, well, loads of customers have different needs and different requirements from like medical needing it to be antimicrobial and being able to be wipeable for education to be easily easily seen 
and to try and find the best need for the customer. Uh, of course, to EPOS as well for stores and for anybody that acquired with the programmable stuff, uh, we can yeah do it all. And with of course with of course the uh, assistive technology as well, we focus on very religiously with our monster range and our key guards and our trays that we are recently acquired Maxis for. And we just try to keep it up to date, uh, follow what the customer needs. We try we we follow the market to try, try and see what's trendy. But of course, it's changing every day. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's a need for something, we'll mm. try and find a solution. Mm. Uh, moving on to the Disability Expo, um, obviously we, we've got some core products that we're looking at and um, you're providing uh, headsets um, and I, I thought I would start there because, you know, one of the things that's so special about your headsets is they're made from a, well it's not really a recyclable material but it's more of a, a sustainable material. Uh, hmm. Is it wheatgrass? Could you... Fantastic. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because these are great. Um, yeah, so that it's wheatgrass. Yeah, you're right. And wheatgrass is, is a bioplastic um, formed from a natural polymer with cleanable alternative to plastic. Yeah, and, and in doing so, wanting to replace all plastic, of course, with the positives of wheatgrass is it's biodegradable. Yeah. So after six months or 12 months, either in landfill or in uh, the compost bin in uh, over six months it degraded into a safe material for anything to eat so it's very very healthy for the environment and of course with doing this we're hoping to eventually turn all our products into wheatgrass to of course do our best for the environment yeah um, we're working on we've got headsets webcams keyboards mice uh, i think gonna look into speakers as well um, with a cork or bamboo Sort of shell so there's really sort of no limit to what we can make from wheatgrass